It's registration day. It's registration day. <coughs> okay. All right, here we go. Information. Mental. Oh, there are a lot of mentors here. They all seem great though. Oh, and it's selling out fast. How do I even choose? Hi there, it's Natalia. Hey, I'm Michael. Hi, I'm Ryan. I certainly have been in this exact situation before when I was choosing my mentor for ANO2, also known as Body Mechanics, over at Animation Mentor. So at Animation Mentor, a mentor is someone that will be guiding you through the animation process, basically. These are all going to be people that work in the industry, so you'll be in good hands, uh, pretty much, but you also want to pick mentors that will work to your strengths. We've got some tips on what to look out for when choosing your next animation mentor. Oh, and if you're new here, welcome to Students of Animation, the channel for and by student animators. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any tips of your own on how to choose your next mentor, please leave them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. So one of the first things you should really look at is your mentor's demo reel and past experiences. You really want to hone in on the style that your mentor tends to animate. So for instance, are they more of a cartoony animator or do they have a lot of VFX experience? Also consider the animation style that you want to eventually pursue and see how your mentor relates to those. If you want to be a cartoony animator, find a mentor that has that kind of style. Do you want to work at Pixar? find a mentor that has that kind of style. For me, when I was choosing my mentor for Animation Basics, one of the main factors that I considered when choosing him was that he worked at Pixar. Pixar is definitely one of the studios that inspired me to become an animator. And it was really cool and really fun to learn about the inner workings of the studio, what the workflow is like, uh, what a week in the life of a Pixar animator was like through my mentor. It's definitely a good way to see what one of the studios that you're hoping to work in one day is like. For me personally, I really love Pixar and I want to work there one day. So I try to tailor my mentors around that style of animation. Even if it's not exactly Pixar mentor every term, I, I do try and look for a realistic style of animation. Um, so I've had animators from uh, Pixar, Disney Imagineering, Blue Sky, and DreamWorks. I kind of went in a range from realistic to more cartoony, but that gives me a well-rounded approach and going at a Pixar style of animation. I was actually in the same animation basics class as Natalia, and um, it was really interesting to see how even though it was just basic block cycles, things can change based on your style of animation. And that's that's what's really important about looking at which style you want and choosing the right one for you. One more thing you might want to consider is your personal learning style and how that meshes with your mentor's teaching style. For instance, do you learn a lot from mentors demoing the animation process in front of you or do you learn from being shown examples in class and being shown the specific details that make the animation good. Think about the sort of things that would help you the most in a class setting and see if your mentor offers uh, those kinds of experiences. It's going to be hard to really discern this information from their demo reel or from their resumes, so you might have to ask around and see if a mentor does X or does Y. Take some time to talk to previous students, um, alumni, anybody who might have taken the classes with some of the different mentors and say, hey, which mentor did you have and what did you think about it? What was class like in general? Especially if your animation school is online, you definitely want to make sure that you're able to communicate with your mentor. In my case, I myself am pretty hyper, pretty excitable, and I, from experience, I found myself learning better from mentors who are chaotic, for lack of a better word. It gets me really motivated and excited about the things that we're learning in class and just about animation in general. Things click well and I just understand things better from a mentor who have that energy as well. I find that with more mellow mentors, although they're amazing and they have such incredible insight, it just takes me longer to understand and communicate with them. And when I receive feedback from these mentors, kind of like, deconstruct and understand what they mean by certain things. So definitely being able to communicate with your mentor and knowing what 
kind of personality clicks with you well is super important. For me, I like a teacher who's upbeat and energetic. Um, like Nat, I like teachers who engage with the class and, and talk with us and ask us questions and we can bounce ideas off of them for, for the class period. Uh, it, it's just a lot more engaging and enriching than a teacher who will just talk for 60 minutes um, and it's and it's no questions, nothing. It's just him joining on. It's like, kill me, I can't learn that way. Um, there are plenty of people who can and I fully get it, go on with it, but like, it's just, it's better for me to have a upbeat class where I'm not, I'm not honestly a little bored during it. Me, I personally don't learn that much when my mentor animates in front of me, um, but I do really learn from examples being shown and seeing the specific details that I miss that make these animations really good. So this is going to be the most important tip of the entire video. Check the time zone of the class before you take it. If you're not going to be able to function at the time that that class takes place, it doesn't matter how good the mentor is, you're not going to learn what you need to learn from that class. So for us internationals, this is pretty much one of the first things we've got to do when deciding on a mentor. What time is their class? What time is it here? I don't know. World Time Buddy is a great website to figure out all the time zones. And yeah, just making sure that class isn't at a ridiculous time for you, like at 2am or something. That would be sad. I would be sad. When I picked my very first mentor for the Maya Basics workshop, I decided to pick a mentor who was based in Australia. That for me was important because I wanted to slowly get to know the Australian animation community and having a mentor who is an animator in Aussie was a good way to start that. I can't speak for other animation schools, but at Animation Mentor, I know most of the mentors are clustered around American uh, times. So yeah, I know it's a bit of a challenge for international students to be able to find good time slots. Um, but maybe there's other animation schools that are more friendly towards, say, the European market or the Australian market. Find one that works for you at a good time. I've had classes at midnight, I've had classes at 1, I've had classes at 8 o'clock at night. I promise you the ones where I learn the most are at 8 o'clock. The ones where it's at 1 a.m., I'm just thinking about let's get out of here so I can go to bed. I don't really want to be here. But the classes where I, it's at 8, I want to animate afterwards. And that's a great feeling and it's something that if your class is at 3 o'clock in the morning and you're, you just want to crawl over to your bed and get in it, you're not going to take anything good away from that experience. Finally, it's always a fantastic idea to have some diversity in your mentors. That could be as simple as diversity of studio that they work at, but it could also be actual diversity. Have your mentors come from all walks of life, male, female, different races, different countries. We work in an international community of people. We literally can get people from all walks of life in animation, and it's important to think about different outside perspectives in our work. Me personally, I've had pretty much all my mentors be from different studios. And because of that, I've been exposed to a bunch of different workflows and approaches to animation, which I found to be really helpful. They all have their own way of animating and their approach to working through a shot. And as a result of being seeing all of these workflows, I've been able to more easily develop a workflow of my own that works for me. And I've discovered things that I could incorporate from each mentor. I also think that it's really important to not just learn from the greats of animation, but to also learn from animators who have similar background to me. In my case, these are animators who are Asian, female, or both. I wanted to know about their experiences as a minority in the community. It's reassuring to know that a couple of the mentors that I've had haven't been hindered by the fact that they're a minority in the community and still have had the opportunity to create and to do really amazing projects and everything. But of course, yeah, it's not perfect. It definitely helps to know about the experiences uh, because for me, it serves as a little bit of a reality check so that I know what I'm walking into when I you know, apply for these big studios. And as the next generation of animators, I really hope that we can see a bigger variety of faces in the animation studios being able to tell their stories. It's slowly happening, but it's, it's, it's emphasize the slow. 
So real quick to recap, here's the things that you should remember when looking for your next animation mentor. Mental demo reel and experiences, personality and communication style, time zone and location, and mental diversity. Hopefully what we shared with you today really helps you pick your next animation mentor. That's, you know, always what we do when we pick our mentors. If you have any other questions or if you have any tips that you want to share with us, uh, please drop it in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And do please give a like if you did enjoy this video as well. Thank you so much for watching and sticking to the end. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah.